Hirschsprung disease, also known as a ganglionic megacolon. Hirschsprung disease was named after Danish physician known as Harald Hirschsprung in 1886, and it refers to a congenital disorder that is characterized by a ganglionosis in the distal colon that results in functional obstruction. Enteric ganglion cells are derived from the neurocrest during embryonic development. And in normal development, the neuroblasts are found in the esophagus by the fifth week of gestation. Then they migrate to the small intestine by the seventh week, and they move to the colon by the twelfth week. There are three nerve plexus that innervate the intestines, that is, the submucosal or masonal plexus, the myenteric or albach plexus, and the smaller mucosal plexus. Normally, motility in the gastrointestinal tract is primarily under control of intrinsic neurons. In the absence of in extrinsic signals, bile function remains adequate, that is why the enteric nervous system is also referred to as a second brain. Intestinal small muscle contraction and relaxation are under control of the enteric ganglia. Most enteric nerve activation causes muscle relaxation that is mediated by the enteric neurotransmitters such as nitric oxide. And extrinsic neuroafferents, the enteric nervous system, contains cholinergic and adrenergic fibers. The, these cholinergic fibers cause contraction, whereas the adrenergic fibers are inhibitory fibers. In patients with Hirschsprung disease, both my enteric and submucosal plexus are absent. Therefore, in the absence of these enteric nervous system reflexes, control of the interstitial smooth muscle is overwhelmingly extrinsic. The cholinergic excitatory system predominates over the adrenergic inhibitory system, increasing the smooth muscle tone. The increased muscle tone is an opposed because of the laws of the intrinsic enteric relaxing impulses. And this leads to an imbalance of the smooth muscle contractility and there is a coordinated peristalsis that causes functional obstruction of the colon. The cause of this aganglionic megacolon is unknown and there are two theories which propose that it is caused by a failure in the cephalocord migration of the neurocrest cells into the distal bile during development and hostile microenvironment in the colon can cause damage the already present neuroblasts. And three genes have been identified that are linked to this aganglionic megacolon, and that is the RET gene, endothelial cell beta gene that is on the chromosome 13, and endothelial 3 gene that is on the chromosome 20. And this aganglionic megacolon is associated with some other conditions such as trisomy 21, that is Down syndrome, genitourinary abnormalities, neuroclase abnormalities, Waterbach syndrome, and anorectal malformations. The histological hallmark of this aganglionic megacolon is aganglionosis in the plexus of Meissner and plexus of Obach. The nerves affected are the non-cholinergic and non-adrenergic nerves. Then this leads to an opposed autonomic nervous system functioning which causes reduced or absence peristaltic and increased intestinal phoenix atone. Then the pathological hallmark is the distension and hypertrophy of the gut that is proximal to the aganglionic segment. Then the funneling or coning of the gut between the two transition zones and constricted or collapsed gut at and the distal to the aganglionic portion. The clinical features of this Hirschsprung disease are delayed passage of meconium after birth, then child with a history of chronic constipation since birth, bowel obstruction with bilious vomiting, abdominal distension for feeding, and failure to thrive in children. The investigation you conduct in your diagnosis, you have to conduct complete blood count, sperm electrolytes, plain abdominal radiograph, genetic analysis, full thickness rectal biopsy, together with a barium enema, 
In treatment, it is either supportive or surgical. And in your supportive treatment, you have to monitor fluid and electrolyte balances. Then you insert a soft rectal tube and give the patient a soft enema and irrigate the gastrointestinal tract until the patient settles. You have to administer antibiotics if fever and perionism is present. In your definitive management, the principles are to decompress and they improve nutrition, establish the extent of the disease, then definitive surgery. Temporary colostomy and serial biopsy will be done with the resection of a ganglionic segment, then anastomosis of the proximal to the distal segment. We have modes of surgery that you use in heart sprung disease and such as suspension operation, dahamel, swab operation, line operation, and total colonic aganglionosis known as Martin's procedure.